Hey guys, Joe here. And in this video, I've talked about this before, but because it's coming up in my life, I uh, figured I should talk about it again. So with your business, if you are the business, you're in trouble, okay? And what I mean by if you are the business, like if you're the one physically answering the phone calls, doing the emails, actually doing the, the installations, like if you're doing all the work, what happens is if you're sick, if you're injured, if, you know, your kids are sick, if your wife, uh, you know, family, whatever, and they need you to the point where you can't work, well, what's going to happen to your business? What's going to happen to your income? What's going to happen, you know, like how long can your business survive without you? Um, and the reason why this is coming up is because I just got my second shot. Uh, I did not want it, but my wife was uh, mentally just messed up because of the media and everything else. And it just got to the point where I'm like, we, we just got to get her shot. Like, you have to move on with your life. Um, so we got the first one. Everything was fine, obviously. The second one, like, I feel like shit. And so that's why this, you know, thought came up into my head. Because, you know, back in, to say, 2017, 18, 19... You know, when I was the one physically going out to the estimates or doing the installations or whatever else, well, I would have had to just go. And the way I feel right now, like if, you know, I'm a fence installer, well, I'm not really a fence installer, I have a fence company. So, you know, before if I could put in 20 posts a day, like I'm pretty sure that I'm only getting in 10. Like I just feel like shit. And what's gonna happen to your income? You know, what's gonna happen if I had to rely only on myself and, you know, now everything's being pushed back and then what happens if there was rain the next day and all these other kind of issues simply because there wasn't a backup plan, you know? And so that's what you gotta look at in your business. You know, some people, you know, there's basically two types of owners. There's ones that wanna be the actual entrepreneur and be the owner. And then there's the other people that wanna be the operator and actually do the work. They just don't wanna work for someone else. Again, the problem with that, if you're gonna be that owner operator is that you are the business. So just make sure if that's what you're going to do, that you, like everyone needs to have like basically a little nest egg in case something happens. But it's especially important because, you know, for these owner operators, because like, you know, I, I broke my ankle getting out of a forklift. Um, like shit happens like you just don't know and a lot of times it's kind of like when it's it starts to rain you know the the downpour isn't too far behind it and what i mean by that is like you know everything will be fine you know in my business and then little things start to happen so it's kind of like a little drizzle right and then something else happens something else happens something else happens and the next thing you know it's kind of like an all hands on deck kind of deal because the shit storm just came through and like screwed everything up so that's where you got to be careful um so you have to at least have plans in place you know you got to start looking at it realistically and be like well if i can't work for two weeks what's going to happen um, you know, because obviously a lot of people are living, you know, paycheck to paycheck. Um, and then not only that, but if you don't have the income coming in and you're not able to answer the phone calls, the emails and all this other shit, you know, for two weeks or even maybe even more, well, what's going to happen to your business and basically your entire paycheck, even if you get back to work after two weeks is going to start drying up because if you can't answer the phone calls and emails, then you might get bad reviews or they like basically bad word of mouth because, you know. You know, people talk, you know, if they say I'm about to get a fence, but I tried calling, you know, X, Y, and Z company and they don't answer and they said they were going to show up, but then they didn't show up. And then they called last minute and said, oh, I'm sick and can't get there for two weeks or you said I was going to get there, but then you still feel like shit. So then you keep pushing it back and back and back. And then next thing you know, you got all this bad word of mouth kind of working against you. So that's my video for today. Um, you just have to make those plans. If you want to continue to be that owner operator, well, 
there's basically two options that you might want to consider is one is you know continuing to be that owner operator and then what you need to do is basically have a decent sized nest egg probably like six months worth um to cover all not only your expenses remember you have all your business expenses too because just because you stop working doesn't mean that your bills stop piling up. You know, if you have a warehouse or you have vehicles that you're still paying off or the, the insurance, whatever it may be, you know, those bills don't stop. So have six months of basically income um, saved up to cover yourself. So you're, that way you're protecting your family and then also for your business, so you're protecting your business. So that's option one. The other option that you can do, and you still need a nest egg, obviously, you still need money put aside in case shit goes down. But another option for owner operators is instead of doing all that shit, especially the people that are just starting out in the beginning, because I didn't realize this, I didn't think about this, is instead of going from employee to owner operator, it's really a lot smarter to go from employee to subcontractor for another company. Because what ends up happening is there's a lot of business lessons that you need to learn and they're expensive. And it just makes it a lot easier if you're only installing for another company. Are you going to make a little bit less? Yeah, but there's a lot less um, lessons. There's a lot less that you need to learn. There's a lot less in the actual uh, expenses that you need to take on in the very beginning if you're working for someone else. And something else that you can try to do is actually be a subcontractor for the company you're already working for. Because you have to have that, you know, open, uh, you know, communication. If you are basically a rock star at your current business and you're like, well, I really want to make more money and blah, blah, blah. And I really want to get to the next step. Well, have that open and honest conversation with your, you know, with your owner. Now, it depends on the owner. Now, if you have an owner that's open minded and sees things clearly as opposed to, um, I shouldn't say clearly, I should say more of a, an abundance uh, type of mindset. Um, and what I mean by that is like people that have an abundance mindset, there's two types of people. There's abundance and then there's um, like a limited mindset. And what ends up happening, the abundance mindset figures out ways, they're, they're mentally programmed to figure out ways to be able to work together, to look at the bright side of things and realize that, you know, if they've been in business, just say, say 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years, like the one with the abundance mindset realizes there's enough work for everyone in the area. There's just plenty of work because there's so many contractors, even if like for fence companies, there's like seven plus actual fence companies. That doesn't include the, like the landscapers and all the guys doing it on the side and everything else. There could be like 20, 30, 40 people that do fence in my area, but yet we have plenty of work, right? Now, if you have someone with this limited mindset, they're gonna think, well, if even if they've been around for 10, 15 years and they're doing like millions of dollars in business, if they end up, you know, you talk to them and you say, look, I wanna start my own thing, um, blah, blah, blah. They're gonna immediately think that you're taking a piece of the pie. And then what they're gonna think mentally is that they're going from multi-million, just say $2 million in revenue a year, to you taking like a million dollars away from them. Like that's what they're going to think. Now, if you're dealing with that type of individual, well then you'll kind of not want to say anything until you're situated, you know, so you have like the truck and the equipment and blah, blah, blah. So that way when you go to leave, and also you really want to talk to other companies, um, that way when you're ready to actually leave, then you have that conversation with them and be like, look, this is where my head's at. Um, I'm looking to start subcontracting for other companies. I would love to work for you because we have this great relationship, but I understand if that's not the route you want to go. And what's going to end up happening is one of two things. One, they're going to, you know, A, work with you. Or two, they're just going to let you go immediately and try to fuck you over. Like, um, I guess that would be option three. Um, where they're really trying to screw you over and bad mouthy and everything else. Because it happens. Because um, people are crazy. Like, they very, you know, they, again, with this limited mindset, it's kind of like, you know, a dog, you know, trying to take food away from a dog. Like, they're going to bite you. Um, and it just happens. So anyway, longer uh, story than I meant to say, but anyway, it needs to be said. But uh, yeah, be careful with what you do and be careful of 
being intentional of how you are setting up your business because things like this um, can really it, it could really screw you up and set you really behind and again it's normally when it starts raining like that downpour or that shit storm is not too far behind and it always seems like it comes in waves after you get through that shit storm then everything you know starts clearing out but are you able to handle that shit storm so anyway have an awesome day and i will talk to you soon